and today we're going to be talking about weeds. So, first of all, a weed is anything that you don't want growing in that space. A weed could be anything, like, say for example, a tomato plant. Even if you don't, like, think tomato plants are bad, there's still weeds if you don't want them in that spot. So, now that you know what a weed is, here's how to take care of it. In order to kill a weed, you need to pull it from the roots. If you just pull off a leaf or pull off from the middle of the stem, then it won't kill the weed. The weed will just come back. Pulling it out from the roots. See the roots? That kills the weed. Weeds will come back unless you use things like pesticides and herbicides. But since we don't use that, another way we prevent weeds is using hay, which is called mulching. You put the hay down, which is this stuff, in order to prevent weeds from coming up again. The main reasons why weeding is important are because when you have weeds, the weeds take up a ton of space and they take the nutrients from the soil that your plants can use. They also mess up your pavement. Thanks for watching. That's it for today. Hi, my name is Jakaira. Hi, my name is Shada. And we are working with a New England pollinator. Let's show you how to use it. It's a good way to save water and rain. Water goes to the New Englander. There's the watering can. But I will fill up the water. Water and then you can use the rain water to water the sunflower. I mean, we are going to water this plant gently tilted onto the top of the water and always hold this part if you need to. When you are carrying it, just move that so that they can grow. There you go, Jakarta. Would you like to water any? Sure. Always step. If you can see how Jakarta is stepping on the block, this is what you do during the garden. And, and that's, that's how, how you water. water. Hi, my name is Melon. I'm at City Talk. I'm an intern. This is my first year. Um, what I really like about sea sponges is you know the animals like when we found I want to tell you guys yeah. how to take care of tomatoes. The, one of my favorite plants in the garden that looks like tomato smell. Right here is a sucker. It's in between the like, two branches and it like sucks the energy out of tomato like this one right here or this one. So you want to pick it like that. Go to your nail, just clip it. And then take it off so more energy is focused into the tomatoes. Okay, so now we're going to talk about staking tomatoes. So tomatoes are like vines, and so if they don't support the flop down, then your tomatoes will get all in the dirt and stuff. So what you want to do is you want to put a cage like this, tomato cage, people sell tomato cages, and you put it around the tomato, and then they'll grow through. And yeah, so now we're going to talk about harvesting. So when you have ripe tomatoes like these, you harvest them by picking them. You would squeeze them off the vine like that, and then you have a tomato. If you can see, there are some San Marzanos in the middle. They're like those great tomatoes that you have in sauces. Like all, and like, you know, they're really good if you just like dry roast them. Or like put them on bread. These are really nice. And they're long and red, so. Yeah, that was Tomatoes by Millen. And, um, yeah, bye. Hi, I'm Ella. I like to play in the dirt and get dirty. And I'm going to teach you about compost. I'm here to teach you about the compost. For a healthy compost, you need nitrogen. It should be moist and sloppy. For example, apple cores, eggshells, pumpkin, orange peels, Stuff like that, it's on the side. And then you're also gonna need carbon. 
It should be brown, dry, and bulky. For example, dry leaves, pine needles, paper, newspaper torn up, straw, and wood chips. This is what a healthy compost should look like. You're going to have to, have to keep it fresh by turning it every day and maybe watering it every once in a while or something. This, so, this is a turning tool. And then you turn, you twist it in, go around, and then you uh, untwist it. And then you do that in other places. There should be worms, bugs, stuff like that in the compost at all times. If there's not, then it's not a good compost. In fact, it's not really compost at all. Lastly, you should water your compost every other day so it can stay fresh and decompose faster. You can water it with the hose. If you follow these simple rules, you soon have a great, healthy soil. Toodles! Hi, my name is Nye and I like to harvest plums. Hi, my name is Nye and I like to water plants. We are the watering crew. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> First, you turn on the water to a medium level and fill your pail up. You will have to water more than you think. Then water away and leave a puddle in the soil. So when you know when you are done watering is where there is a puddle waiting to form and you should water at the roots so the plants get a lot of nutrients. Hi, my name is Jamila and I like cooking. Hi, my name is Janina and I like planting stuff and then getting to eat the plant. Hi, my name is Bob and I like to cook things. My name is Janaja, not Bob. <laughs> We're gonna tell you about the right and wrong ways to get rid of pests. So, there are lots of different kinds of pests. You shouldn't kill them if you don't know what it is. You should always look them up before actually killing them. And don't use pesticides, because nobody wants to eat that. Eat when you can just catch them by hand. An example of a pest is a cabbage moth. A cabbage moth has been eating her and she's very sad. My beautiful cabbage is gone! Why? Why me? My plants! My food! My life! Gone! Because of a cabbage moth! What you... You shouldn't just kill bugs just because. Because you don't know what's helping your garden and what's destroying it. Like worms, for example. Just because you see them doesn't mean that they're a threat to your garden. They actually help your garden with the soil and stuff. But if you just kill them, well, good luck. And bees. You might think bees are bad because, well, they can sting you, but they're good for um, pollinating the plants, or the flowers. No matter how gross and disgusting they are, they're still Hi, my name is Phoebe. I like harvesting and I'm going to show you how. This segment will show you and tell you how and when to harvest your crop. So how do you harvest blueberries? <laughs> you gently pull on the berry. If the berry doesn't come off easily, it may not be ready. And how do you harvest kale? Uh, you should take the big leaves from the bottom and cut them off close to the stem. How do you harvest carrots? You know when to harvest carrots when there's an orange top that you can see. Then pull upward to harvest the carrot. How do you harvest sour plums? You pull on the stem to harvest it and you know when they're ready because they are plump and firm. And how about garlic? You can tell that your garlic is ready because the leaves are turning brown. Um, hi, I'm Mika and I like to chop when cooking and I'm going to teach you about garden tools. So, the have the rick and the trowel and so the rick and the trowel is used for like the digging, it's used for the digging. 
trau. And the rake is used for like making the soil smooth and like making space for planting seeds. And this is also for the planting of the seeds. Um, and so we got the bucket. We need buckets in general because we got to carry the crops and the harvested stuff. And also the wagons are helpful for that, as you can see. Um, what else? Oh, yes. So um, this um, lopper is used for um, cutting up the stuff in the compost. And you chop it up so it's easier to decompose. I'm sorry, my hat is falling off. Okay, and so here we have the, the, the compost crank, and you just spin it with the compost, so you can just decompose the stuff easily. So yeah, and also we have the watering can, which is used for obviously well watering, and you just put the water here, and it comes up to here, and this it works. It's nice. And, and the, uh, and uh, the hose is also used for watering. It's a very efficient thing to use. So thank you very much for um, coming to um, my lesson. So goodbye now. So. Guess what we're doing in the garden today? What? We're going to teach these people how to plant. Great. What are we going to teach them though? We're going to teach them how, to, how deep the hose should be, planting with seeds, transplanting, and watering the seeds. Well, watering sounds like fun. Let's start with that. How are we going to start watering the seeds if we didn't plant anything yet? Right. <laughs> oh, teach them how deep the hole should be. No. Okay then. The depth of the hole depends on what you're planting. If you're planting something like carrots, you need rows. But if you're, if you're planting something like a flower, the hole's going to be different. With the flower, you just dig a deep enough hole to drop the seed in with and the then shovel. You, yeah, and then you fill it back in with water. Hi, my name is Monika. Hi, my name is Amber. And, and we, we like to cook. cook. We're going to be talking about the pollinator bed. This is the pollinator bed. The flower would attract the bee, then the flower would come pollinate. As the bee pollinate, the bee would bring the pollen to each flower in it, but like so the plant will grow. The pollinated bed is for bees to pollinate. Knock knock, who's there? Bee. Bee who? Bee be rolling. They be pollinating. Thanks for watching. Bye.